Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. The website can be found at www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That is where you go to find the archives. That is where you go to see the devotionals, the blog post, the book. That is where you go to support this mission of truth. Today we are looking at this week's prophet portion for the week, uh, which happens to be out of the book of Judges, uh, Judges 4, 4 through 531. Uh, but of course we'll be reading the whole chapter 4. We won't be starting with verse 4. And we'll be reading the whole chapter 5. Neither are very, very long, uh, but that's what's on the schedule today. If you're new to the broadcast and you're wondering where that schedule comes from, it comes from torportions.org. Uh, you can also go to my website, www.scriptureandprophecy.com. In the blog section, uh, there is an article uh, called, What is the Half Torah? What is the Half Torah? And uh, that tells uh, kind of the background of where this originated and why we do a weekly prophets portion or a weekly Torah portion. Uh, all that's there for you to find. Before we get into this week's portion, I want to just read a few passages here. First, I want to start with 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, 1 through 3, which says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter from us, as if the day of Christ is at hand. Now listen. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You know, as the disdain for Christianity grows, as the hatred for righteousness grows, grows the more difficult it becomes to be a Christian the more you're going to see those who aren't really rooted in Christ those who are just playing Christian those who are just Sunday worshipers alone as the temperature rises as it gets more difficult as it begins to cost you something whether that be reputation, whether that be jobs, whether that be whatever, family, friends. As your faith begins to cost you something, you're going to see multitudes of people fall away from the faith. Paul says, let no man deceive you. That day is not going to come except there come a falling away first. Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew, it says, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Another translation says, And blessed is he who shall not fall away in me. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. You see, following Jesus cost you something. If you're truly following Christ. Matthew 24. Let me read these three verses and then we'll get to our prophet's portion for the week. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Starting with verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then in shall many be offended. Are we living in a culture today, in a world today, where people are offended? Many are offended, constantly offended. Many shall be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We talk about how there's so many scriptures that say, if 
this, then this. If this, then this. But there's also a lot of important scriptures that start with the word but. So Jesus is saying all this is going to happen. Things are going to not look great. There's going to be a lot of false prophets. There's going to be a lot of hatred. Sin's going to be elevated. And love is going to take a back seat, right? The iniquity shall abound and love will wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. The thing is, is you actually have to finish this race, right? No one enters a marathon and drops out a quarter of the way through and then goes home with a medal and says, I ran a marathon today. No, you got to complete it got to finish the race of faith. Do not fall away on account of me, Jesus says. Blessed is he who shall not be offended in me. Let's look at this week's prophet's portion. Judges chapter 4. Again, the, the portion says to start with verse 4, but we're going to start with verse 1 because text without pretext text without context that is text without context is a pretext to make it mean whatever you want so let's get the full context of what's going on judges chapter 4 through chapter 5 king james bible and the children of israel again did evil in the sight of the lord when ehud was dead and the lord sold them into the hand of jabin king of canaan that reigned in hazor the captain of whose host was Sisera, was Sisera, which dealt in Haraseth of the Gentiles. I think the first thing we need to acknowledge, right out of the gates, we have an apostasy taking place in Israel. Not the first time. Unfortunately, this seems to be the way of God's people. He rescues them, he blesses them, and then they fall away, they apostatize. Matter of fact, I'd have to look it up to be sure. Maybe you can check yourself. But when Paul says there would be a great falling away first, the Greek word in that sentence is apostasy. You'll have to double check me on that. But we have an apostasy taking place here. It says the children of Israel again, again, did evil in the sight of the Lord. Continuing on, verse 3. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. In 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. So they have been under judgment for doing evil in the sight of the Lord. He has given them over to the to this captivity. And they're crying out to God. It's been 20 years. And then here's where the actual portion picks up. Verse 4. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent, and she called Barak, the son of Abinanam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord of God, Lord God of Israel, commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabar, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitudes, and I will deliver him into thy hand. Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thy honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali and Kadesh, and he went up with ten thousand men at his feet, and Deborah went with him. Now Haber the Kenite, 
which was one of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, and served himself from the Kenites, and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zanaim, which is Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak the son of Abinanam was gone up to Mount Tabar. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Horasheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thy hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabar, and ten thousand men after him. And the Lord just confitted Syria, Sisera, and all his chariots, and all his host, with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lightened down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto Harasheth, Harasheth of the Gentiles. And all the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Howbeit, Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera, and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in to unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here, thou shalt say, No. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples, and fastened it to the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him, and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came in unto her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and a nail was in his temple. So Gob subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan until they had destroyed Jabin king of Canaan. All right. That's chapter 4. We're going to read chapter 5, which is not very long. Um, and as well, it's about 30 verses, which is... Uh, basically a song about what just took place. So let's just kind of recap. Uh, just so you know, the, the prophet's portion is based on whatever the portion, the Torah portion for this week is supposed to be. And so that's how it's chosen for those of you who might be uh, wondering that. Again, all that information about the website if you're confused about this. First thing we need to acknowledge... Well, we already acknowledge it, but let's acknowledge it again. Number one, the children of Israel started to live ungodly, right? There was an apostasy that happened, and so they went into the captivity, this captivity, uh, this oppression, if you will, for 20 years. So let's just kind of recap those first few verses. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. Here is the proper response. Because what, you, what we just read was basically a deliverance, right? God spoke to the prophetess Deborah, gave her instruction, they walked out that instruction. All was all of Sisera, the whole army was defeated and killed. And even Sisera himself, he, he tries to take refuge with someone he thinks is going to be an ally to him. 
and then she drives a nail through his head. I mean, that's what the Bible says. It's graphic, but that's what took place. While he's asleep, she drives a nail through his head. So not a single one of them that survived. They went into captivity. They're in there for 20 years. And then they finally got it right and decided to cry out to the Lord. I bring that up because I think that's where we're at. Not just in America, but all around the world. If there's going to be revival, if there's going to be that kind of a movement, if there's going to be kind of a step back away from the cliff, if you will, then God's people have to get on their faces and pray and seek Him and repent and cry out. Otherwise, the judgment's going to go full-blown. I believe we've seen, seen little birth pains of this. It's hard for Christians in America to imagine. But they've already started silencing you. They're already putting these things and these snares in place. The walls are closing in around. And many Christians are docile about this. They're asleep about this. They're blind to it. They're lukewarm. They're so lukewarm they can't see what's going on. So the children of Israel says in verse 3, And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. For he had 900 chariots of iron, and in 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Another interesting thing is some might think that women have no place at all in leadership. Or that they can't be prophets. But look here. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. You never know who God's going to call, who he's going to use. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel and Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgments. All right, so as we read, they come together, they defeat Sisera. And here's the song that they sing. So let's read that and then we'll be wrapped up for the day. Then sang Deborah and Barak the song of Abinanam on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Let's stop. we got to acknowledge this. He avenged Israel what? When? When the people willingly offered themselves. Let's continue on. Verse 3. Hear, O you kings. Give ear, O you princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praises to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchedest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, and the clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. In the day of Shamgar, the sons of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or a spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offended themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. She's pointing out some of their sins in this song. Part of their apostasy was going after strange gods, right? Verse 8, they chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. They abandoned the one true God, went after idol worship, and then war came to their gates. Verse 9, My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offended themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak, 
ye that ride on white asses, ye that sin in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise. Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinanam. Then he made them that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. This is pointing out that God has the power to exalt his people over those who seem like they're just untouchable, right? They're mighty. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of Mekar came down governors, and out of Zebulun they that handle the pen of the rider. And the princes of Ishkar were with Deborah, even Ishkar and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben there were great thoughts of heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds? to hear the blessings of the flocks. For the divisions of Reuben there were great searchings of heart. Gilead abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in the breaches. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death of the high place of the field. The kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan and Tanakh. By the waters of Megiddo, they took no gain of money. They fought from heavens. The stars and their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away. That ancient river, the river Kishon. O oh my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were the horse hoofs broken by the means of praisings and the praisings of their mighty ones. Curse ye, Miraz, said the angel of the Lord, curse ye bitterly, and the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to help of the Lord, to help of the Lord against the mighty. Blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Hebor, the Kenite, be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked water, and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera, and she smote off his head when she had pierced the stricken through his temples. At her feet he bowed and fell. He lay down. At her feet he bowed and fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down, dead. The mother of Sisera looked out at the window and cried through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? Her wise ladies answered her, Ye, she returned, answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? To Sisera a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides. Meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. So let all thy enemies perish, O Lord. But let them that love him be as the sun, when he goeth for in his might. And the land had rest forty years. So that's the end of the prophet's portion. Kind of a strange story. Kind of a strange story, right? There's still lessons for us. Warnings for us. I want to end by reading just a little bit of commentary from Matthew Henry about this and then we'll wrap it up here's what he says he says deborah describes the distressed state of israel under the tyranny of jabin that their salvation might appear more gracious she shows what brought this mercy upon them or i'm sorry she shows what brought this misery upon them it was their idolatry they chose new gods with new names but under all these images, Satan was worshipped. I just want to kind of let us let that sink in. 
when you think about what's going on among the nations today. Yes, they may not be called Satan, right? But really, all idols are Satan worship. Listen, let's read Matthew Henry's commentary again. Deborah describes the distressed state of Israel under the tyranny of Jabin. That their salvation might appear more gracious, she shows what brought this misery upon them. It was their idolatry. They chose new gods with new names, but under all these images, Satan was worshipped. You see, when you abandon the God, the one true God, and you say, we're not going to follow his ways anymore, we're not going to acknowledge him anymore, you know what happens? You go into tyranny. You go into misery. You get to be ruled by the false gods that you worshipped. He goes on to say, Deborah was a mother to Israel by diligently promoting the salvation of their souls. She calls on, calls on those who share the advantages of this great salvation to offer up thanks to God for it. Let such as are restored, not only to the liberty as the other Israelites, but to their rank speak God's praises. This is the Lord's doing. In these acts of His justice was executed on His enemies. In times of persecution, God's ordinances, the walls of salvation, whence the waters of life are drawn, are restored to at the hazard of the lives of those who attended them. At all times, Satan will endeavor to hinder the believer from drawing near to the throne of grace. Notice God's kindness to his trembling people. It is the glory of God to protect those who are most exposed and to help the weakest. Let us notice the benefit we have from the public peace, the inhabitants of villages especially, and give God the praise. You see, if you want God's rescue, then there has to be a humbling. There has to be a trembling of the people. There has to be this on-your-face attitude. And as Matthew Henry points out, if you happen to live in a situation where there's peace, then you better give praise to God. Well, I hope you were blessed this morning. I know it was kind of a strange... Uh, portion this morning. Not a lot there for us to maybe grab from, but hopefully uh, something reached out to you, something pierced your heart, something caused you to draw ever more closely to God. I pray you've been blessed. That's all I have for you this morning. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until next time, God bless. <laughs>